So for modeling percents, now percentages, this is another one of those things where as you get older, percentages will always be in your life. A lot of my students always ask me, when am I going to use this when I get older? Okay. The bottom line is rather than me having my spiel that I give where I talk about you don't use to know, you don't learn algebra to know, you learn it to grow, you use different parts of your brain, blah, blah, I'll tell you all about some other time. But right now, I'm telling you, percentages, that is something that is never going to go away. All right, percentages were huge last week because of the Black Friday sales. Huge on Monday because of the Cyber Monday. Uh, I got a new wallet on, on Amazon, all this stuff, all these great sales. Because it's always a percentage off. And just being kind of familiar with those sorts of things, you can really impress a lot of people just by going through. I mean, um, there's all sorts of sales that are always happening. You can always tell people, well, that's going to be about this much. So today we're going to be doing some percentages. Um, this is also going to come back next year when you're in seventh grade, but we're going to be doing some percentages, and we'll get through with that. So modeling percents. You are following along with your notes with this, and if you didn't get this, we can always come back. So using percents, most states charge sales tax on items we purchase. Sales tax is a, is a percent of the item's price. A percent is a ratio, ratio uh, uh, a number to 100. You can remember that percent means per 100. For example, 8% means 8 per 100, or 8 out of 100. Another way that you'll hear me say is part over whole. Okay, part over whole. So modeling percent. So we are going to go, let's see here. Yeah, let's, uh, so did you, did you, by the way, did you get the, um, did you model, did you write the definition of percent? Under vocabulary, it's under the middle hole punch there. A percent is a ratio of a number to 100. And for the record, if anybody ever tells you, give it your 110%, that's not possible. That's extra credit. No. Well, that, that's, that's different. That's earning more points than you are, could originally possibly earn. But if you're doing, putting effort in something, give me your 110%. I was, no, you can't. Your 100% is the most you can possibly do. This is real life. Okay. So when we model a 10 by 10 square grid, to model 17%. So go ahead and go down to the bottom left there. We're going to show 17% there. There are 100 squares in that. So, oh, you already got it? Okay, so go ahead and shade in, please, shade in what you think is 17% of that. And remember, if you're unsure, that's okay. We're just getting into this, and we haven't had these, these, uh, this grid on our notes for, oh, a month. When we were doing fractions... Hint, hint. Yes, ma'am. Um, no, let's hold off for just a moment. So here's our grid. And what you should have done is, as 17%, because as we just learned in the previous slide, 17 out of 100. 17 out of 100, or 17 hundredths, is to shade in 17 of those squares. Now, you might not have done exactly those ones, okay? But as long as you have 17 of them, and I do want you to have them bunched together, technically, if you did 17 randomly out of those 100, it'd still be correct. However, I want it to be visible. I want to be able to see that it's just 17, okay? I want to be able to see that it's just 17. Now with 26, same situation. What would that fraction be out of 26, Sean? Can you tell me? 26 out of 100. There you go. Go ahead and shade those in. Batman, the sun is out. You're, 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 you are the knight. Nope. 26 squares of those, that's what you should have done. So it would be two full columns and then four more boxes. Six more, sorry, thank you. Six more boxes. Any questions on that so far? 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's cool. I remember doing a, we had a piece of paper that we put one ring on it each day, and when it got to 100, we had a big celebration. All right, next one. I want you to do, let's do the next two on your own, that 12% and that 67%, please. Do the next two on your own, 12%, 67%, then we'll pop through those. Yes, sir, Mr. Bradley. Yeah, we'll probably come back to that. We'll come back to that. But these ones here are more like the homework. No, I said these are more like the homework. What you're doing right now is being quiet and doing the 12% and 67%. And if you don't want to use too much lead, you can just have the outer layer be darker and then lightly shade in the inside. turned it off for a second. Okay, even if you're still shading, hopefully you still get the idea. 12% and 67%. Oh, nope, we don't have that answer. So we should have something, something like this. We are going to have one whole one shaded in, and then just two of the other one, or wherever those two are. For 67, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. And 67 of those are going to be shaded in. That's what you should have. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. All of them? Yeah, this stuff, this stuff, I bet you guys can do this pretty well. Now, here's a question for you. I'm not as familiar with fifth grade Spanish, or fifth grade Spanish, fifth grade math. Now, have you guys had this before? Yeah. Good, good. Cool. Now this, well, we gotta, we got to walk before we can crawl. Let's try that again. we got to walk before we can run. Wow, I'm just switching everything around today. Okay, Washington produces the most apples, or Washington produces the most apples. About 50% of the apples grown in the U.S. come from Washington. So I would like you to represent that as saying, what does it mean? From going from the other thing, what does that mean? 50%. What does that mean? Can someone tell me? What does that mean? Yeah, Nikki? Half the U.S.'s apples come from Washington. Great. Taylor, do you have another way of saying that? Okay. Papa? 50 out of 100. Wonderful. Do you have another way of saying it? Okay, what about, what is the most simplified ratio, DJ? Yes, one in two apples that are grown in the United States come from the state of Washington. Beautiful. So it's going to be shading in 50% of that, and that's gone. So you should have a, half of that should be shaded in so you can see it, visualize it. Nevada is the fastest growing state. Its population has grown about 66% in the last 10 years. So go ahead and represent that population growth in percentages. Yes, ma'am. It does. It's, a, it's There's still a hundred there. They're just rectangles rather than squares. Are you, for the Nevada? Is that what you're talking about? The, yeah. That grid? Yeah, they're just, they, those ones um, started to work out a little bit. They're a little bit, you know. A little bit. They're, they're, they're getting ready for the putting on the weight of the holidays, so they lost a little weight first. So you should be 66%, so you should have 66 of those little uh, rectangles filled in. 
Make sure you also do the what does it mean? What does it mean? So now we have reviewed what are fractions. No, sorry, what are percentages? Now we're going to start talking about <coughs> fractions and how they are related to percentages. So you should have 66% of those, 66 of those boxes. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, but that would be a decimal. That's the word you meant there. If you had that fraction, you multiplied or divided the, the bottom by the top, then you'd have a decimal, and that's what we'll get to. Yep. Now, I just introduced and said that ratios or fractions are related to percentages. Can someone tell me how they might be related? When was the last? Well, here's a clue. When was the last time that we did these uh, grids, Maddie? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. So you're saying yes. So you're saying sometimes the denominator is 100, and that could be easier to transport it like that or visualize it like that. Good. Yes, Taylor. Um, sometimes fractions tend to be in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if you Yeah, we can represent fractions as decimals. We can represent decimals as fractions. We can rent fr re represent fractions as a percent, and they all can be represented in different ways. Sometimes, or a lot of times, fractions are a lot more accurate because there are not repeating decimals. So we, how can percents become a fraction? So what we're going to do is we're going to shade in 25% of that first grid because that is 25 out of 100. The trash can? You mean the recycle bin? I mean, yeah. Yep, because they don't ever recycle it. Yeah, I don't understand that. So then I want you to tell me what does 25% equal as a fraction? Yes. One fourth. So one fourth. So 25% equals one fourth. So go ahead and write that on that line down at the bottom. So 25% equals 1 fourth. But then we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 squares there. 10 squares. Can you guys fill in a fourth of that 10 squares? Please do it. Now, you're going to have a couple that uh, don't go all the way through. Because what is a fourth of 10? Yeah. 2.5. So actually, what, we're, what you would have done is. Yep, colored two boxes and colored in a half there, yeah. Yep. Yep. And if I were to redo this slide, I'd make there be. Um, yeah, I'd make there be eight. And 30, yes? Yep, that's exactly what I did. See, there's a line right here ish. Oh, yeah, it's still, that's still fourth. Yes? That says 35 on yours? 35, 36, interesting. Okay. So, Considering that's exactly the same as the other one, okay, 
what you're going to do is, and this is what I do with my uh, seventh graders, so I know that you're still with me, I want you to write Smith right here. Because it shows me that you're not just ignoring that, that I actually told you to skip that one because we already did one just like it. Well, I just wrote my name because it's easier to write in cursive on the whiteboard. Now, here is the ratios related to percents. So how do ratios, fractions, become percents? So 4 of 5 is what percent? 4 of 5 is what percentage, Avery? 80%? Yes. Yes. It is 80%. Now, if we had these guys, and we are looking at 1, 2, 3... Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why do they keep doing seven now? If we had four out of five, so let's let's do let's get rid of these guys. Don't don't um, ignore that. Ignore that. Okay. You do okay. You do. All right. So that's all right. So that's ignore this for you then. Okay. So you already have those. So good. You have ten now. How do ratios, fractions, become percents? Four-fifths. And uh, who just told me that it's 80% again? So Avery just told me that it's 80%. So four of five is saying that four of these five sections, the vertical sections, are going to be filled in. Four of five of them, so 80%. Four of every five. And we also said that it's 80% as well, so I would do leaving just two. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's an abstract art. Thank you. It does. It does finally It does. It does. So it comes out to be 80% as, as we just talked about. So... So four out of five is eighty or four fifths or eighty percent. So four, so four out of five, and in your notes you're gonna write that on the line. Four out of five equals four fifths, which equals eighty percent. Yeah. Yep, you can have it either way. I, I want to get more going to, now that we've, we've seen the, the relationship to them, I want to go more toward what your homework is tonight. Okay? Three out of ten on a test. Did you pass the test? I guess we can show that. That that, that shows real life stuff. If you got three out of ten on the test, did you pass the test? I haven't heard from Abby yet. Abby? No. What did you get on it? Thirty percent. Yeah, you got three out of ten on it. Now, does that mean that necessarily there were ten questions? Not necessarily, because that's just a ratio. Three out of ten. Okay, that could have been you got six right with 20 questions. Okay, that could have been you got six right out of 20 questions. So, no, definitely not. You got a 30 percent. Whoops, it happens. You get 30 percent. So you got 30 percent on that. Hmm. You know what? You know what we're gonna do. We'll do the study guide first. One, two, three, four. Because this has how to do it on the top as well, and we're gonna discuss this too. No. So, shh, 
Listen up, here's what's going on. I'm passing out a thing called a study, the, the study guide for 8-5. However, this doesn't mean that this is a study guide for a test. This is just showing you how to do it on the same page that what you're doing it. Okay, so we're going to have this, and you're going to use this. Two, four, five, two, four, six. We're going to be using this to improve how we're going to be doing the actual homework that I'm going to pass out here in a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, sir. Very, 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 very rarely. I'll tell you guys if we do. We're not, we're not really using those anymore. Those are really old. No, that hopefully you do know where your math book is. Um, doubtful. Yeah. Now. Here is the way that it is related with uh, percents and fractions and also proportions. Now, we did proportions yesterday. We had it be a equal proportions where a fraction is equal to a fraction, and we had to solve for the variable. Yes, ma'am? Extras? Okay. Is every fraction going to be out of 100? Is every fraction going to be out of 100? Good question. Now. Right, wait, hold on, I'm just exp I'm introducing. You should not have started yet other than write your name on it. Okay? Now, no, right, your name. Uh, show in folder. Oh, you are cheeky. Now, this is how we were working yesterday. We had things that looked like this yesterday. We had, shh, quiet, quiet. We had proportions like this guy. Examples, one express five eighths as a percent. We didn't have that. However, what we did have was a proportion yesterday that we could, we could find out what x is there, right? OK? And the way that I'm going to want you to remember this is you're always going to have this proportion. It's going to be part, whole, OK? Then whenever there's going to be a uh, the number that you're going to have, it's going to be your number that's in it. So that's going to be your percent without the percent sign. Oop, not that program. So it's going to be the percent number. Part over whole equals percent over 100. I want you to write that on the front page of your notes that we started today. What's that? You can write, oh, yeah, definitely write it in homework as well. Yep, you can write it anywhere that you need to, you'll be able to find it. So finding decimals and percent. Now we'll just do percent. Finding percent. Finding percent is part over whole equals percentage over 100. That this is actually not even going to be your homework. You will, yes. Okay, part over whole. Now, if I could zoom in on this. So here is, well, you were copying me. It was. So we have, what is the part on this guy? Five is the part out of eight. Okay? Eight is the whole, and 100, yeah, 100 is the whole because it's 100%. Okay? 
So now we're going to be finding out as a percent, what is 5 eighths to find that percent? To find that percent. So what's happening here is cross multiplication. Yes. That's ex that's the exact same thing, just going a different, yeah. just going in a different order. Because if you add five to three and then subtract eight, you're gonna have zero. Or if you put them in different orders, as long as you're keeping the same values, you still have zero. But yeah, it will be the same. So we cross multiplied here, cross multiplied here. So now we have eight x is equal to five hundred. And the way that we did it yesterday is we got that to go away, and we divided the other side. Now, you notice how the x is on the right side on this one? Who remembers what I said about what the variable is on? Does it matter if it's on the left or the right? Uh, no, it doesn't. No. Nope. Nope. Nope, it does not. So that's an example as how to do um, as a percent. So we have 5 eighths is 62.5%. Okay, 62.5 percent. Would it be what? Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, we could, we'll do one of those for sure. I want to show you how to do these for the next couple minutes, though. Now, then we have a situation where we have we're given the percentage. We're given the percentage. And they're asking us to write it as a fraction. Okay? They're giving us and asking us how to write it as a fraction. So we would just do the 24 divided by 100, which is a fraction. And you know that you read it as 24 hundredths. That's how that would also go as a decimal. But we just need to reduce. Remember how we need to simplify everything? We need to make it in the simplest form. We need to reduce. Yes, Skyler? Um, I have a question about the other one. Other one? Number two? Yeah, I don't really understand, like, what you do right here to get this. We talked about how, remember yesterday when I was saying how in uh, whatever grade it was, you learned multiplication, so the student's asking about this one here. Um, when we learned about multiplication, you learned multiplication and then division. Those are called inverse operations, or in other words, Multiplication will make something happen to a number. Division by the same number will make it go right back. So we're trying to get this x. We're trying to solve for x. And in order to do that, we have to divide by the thing that's stuck to x. OK? Divide by what starts to x. Both sides. So see how 8 is stuck? Let's see, 200. See how the 8 is stuck to x here? 8 is stuck to x. They're being multiplied together. Remember I said there's an invisible multiplication sign in here? 8 is stuck to x. Okay? If x was a $10 bill and you had 80 of them, you would have, well, sorry, if, if, yeah, so you'd have $80 if x is a $10 bill. But 8 is stuck to x. It's being multiplied. The inverse of that would be to divide by 8, and you do it by both sides. We'll get much more into that next year. Okay, maybe even later this year, but the bottom line is you just have to divide each side by 8 to get x by itself. And that's how you make sure that it, you have 62.5. Because if you were to do 62.5 times 8, because we just solved for x, okay, or as I tell my 7th graders all the time, check yourself before you wreck yourself. If you were to put x in there to be 62.5, 8 times 62.5 is going to equal 500. Ooh, ugly five. Okay. Just bear with me on that. I don't want to get too in depth. I'd be happy to, to get more in depth with you on that later. Yeah. Okay. And, okay, express it as a fraction. The bottom line is. We would need to be sure to uh, express those as a fraction. Let's just do some examples. Let's just do some examples. So you want to do number one? No, as in you're asking me to do number one? Number one is pretty easy. 
Number five, yeah, let's do number five. Let's do number five. So first thing we're going to do is we have the part over the whole is equal to something over 100. Something over 100. And when we're doing proportions over the last month, this times what is 100? Let, uh, Cindy, I haven't heard from you today. Four. That 25 times 4 is 100, so I can just go, okay, 19 times 4. That's one way of doing it, right? You with me? Yeah. It's 76. Good. 4, 76, yep. So it's going to be X equals 76%. I'm going to make sure that we're answering the question, how they're asking it. It says do it as a percent. Yep, X equals 76 so 76%. You can put x equals 76, but you would need to have 76% because it's asking you. Yes? Quinn? Yeah. Does 8 go into 100? No, that's why I want to do this one as well. This one was easy. This one was easier on the left. Number five was easier. Bradley? Would number eight be 90 percent? Would number eight be 90 percent? No. No, 75. So for this one here, we'd cross multiply and we'd have 8x mm -hmm. equals 100. In order to undo that, in order to undo that, I'm going to have to get rid of this. And this is, I think, is how they had it yesterday. Divided by 8. 100 divided by 8. It's 40. Yeah. 40. You know what? I am going to have this be the homework. Mm, we, we, have, we have five minutes. That clock's a little fast. No. No, I'm going to give you the homework, actually. No, that's going to be... Nope. I want you to get more practice in. No, that's going to be the, the examples. I will post all the answers to the study guide on my website. Two, three, four, five. I will post all the examples to this, uh, answers to the ah, study guide on my website. So eight, one hundred. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Oh, I'm just gonna do this. Yes. Oh. Sorry. She is being feisty. All right, so that's that. I'll post the answers to the study guide on my website.